Hello, everybody, and welcome to O2 Classroom. I'm Lisa. I'm the Educational Content Developer here at First Class Medical and also the um, producer of O2 Classroom. Uh, today is um, our first show in March, and that means March is actually National Women's Month. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how um, COPD and other chronic lung conditions affect women um, differently and more severely. But don't worry, fellas, there's plenty for you to learn today, too, for sure. Um, so it's been found that symptoms such as shortness of breath and coughing are often more severe in ladies than there are in men uh, in similar disease progression. Um, so it's, it's especially important for ladies to know your triggers, know your allergic triggers, so you can check the air quality. Uh, you know, if it's dust, make sure you dust frequently. Um, vacuum with HEPA filters, um, you know, check all your, know your triggers so that you can avoid them basically. Uh, whether they're in the air, whether it's steam from the shower or from cooking or um, anything like that. Car exhaust, it can be anything. Um, follow your medication regimen. That's a good advice for anybody. Don't change up your medication. If you're experiencing side effects that you don't particularly like, don't just change your medication. Uh, without speaking to your doctor first. It's dangerous um, and um, it's more likely that you're going to um, cause quicker pro progression with your disease uh, by avoiding your medication. So if you are experiencing side effects, talk to your doctor so that maybe they can help you figure out what's going on and um, maybe figure out some things to help uh, stop it. Uh, be sure to practice your breathing exercises every day, um, several times a day, whenever you have time, do some personal breathing. Um, do the active cycle breathing technique. It's first thing in the morning. Um, it's helpful to um, start your day off on a good note because you will relax those airways a little bit, open them up as wide as they can get, decrease some inflammation so you can clear out some of the congestion that settles in your chest overnight. Um, if you don't know how to do active cycle breathing, take the free Thrive classes. I'll put the link here. Um, if you've been watching the show, I'm sure you've seen them. Those classes are free. Um, so be sure to take those. It's important. It's an important skill to learn. If you do active cycle breathing first thing in the morning, do it before you eat and do it um, maybe 15 to 20 minutes before you take any of your inhaled medication. It's going to help you in all those situations. It's going to make sure that your airways are as open as possible, your breathing as good as possible so that you can digest food more easily. And also it's going to make sure those airways are nice and relaxed and opened up so that when you do take your medication, uh, doesn't just end up in your throat or somewhere, you know, shallow in your chest, but it actually gets deep into your lungs where it's actually going to do you some good. Okay. Uh, women are also more susceptible to risk factors such as smoking at comparable levels to men. Um, there's a lot of different theories uh, regarding this. One of them is because generally ladies, um, you know, have smaller frames and so their lungs are smaller. Um, so being exposed to a greater amount of smoke over, you know, a smaller area is going to cause more damage. Um, so obviously don't smoke, um, avoid secondhand smoke. We did a couple shows, um, on quitting smoking. We did one just a few weeks ago, um, about some strategies to help you quit and stay quit and beat that addiction. It's not an easy thing to do, but it can be done. Um, if you want to watch that show or you want to watch any other shows, go back to first class medicals, Facebook page up at the top. You'll see a menu that says more. Click on more, you'll see videos, click on videos and you'll see, you know, probably a couple hundred videos by now of things that we've done on different topics. And uh, I think we did quit smoking about three weeks ago. So um, check on that. If you don't see a topic there, something you've been wondering about, put it here in the comments. Or if you have a question, put them in the comments. We'll make sure it gets addressed um, in, the, in, in the coming weeks. Um, so avoid secondhand smoke, but also keep in mind it... Um, it's also about cooking smoke. So if you go, you're going to a campfire, you're going to barbecue, be sure to um, stay away from the smoke as much as possible. Um, if you are somewhere like I live in Colorado, where often we are, um, you know, we have wildfires in the summer. Um, you know, be sure to, you know, ev evacuate if you're going to be close enough. That that's going to be an issue. Uh, evacuate as early as possible. And um, if you have to go outside and you're not evacuating, if you're here in the city, because even in Denver, I mean, we've had wildfires that are probably, you know, two, three hour drive from here that you can still smell the smoke. Um, so, you know, be sure to wear an N95 mask. 
Um, we do have, you know, I know everybody, including myself, especially if you have glasses, you are sick to death of masks by this point, but they are a necessary tool for, to wear during flu season. Um, and also if you're going to go out when there's particulates in the air, when it's particularly windy, um, all that dust blowing in your face is going to, um, cause you to cough and could trigger an exacerbation, um, allergens and dust, any kind of particulates, smoke. So um, we do have the N95 uh, rated masks that are really lightweight and e much easier for respiratory patients to breathe through um, because for one of the things they're light, they don't press against your nose. So you don't have that psychological factor too, of just something pressing on your face in addition to something covering your nose. Um, but they're also very, very lightweight. And the thing that I like is that they don't hold moisture. Sometimes, you know, if you have a cloth mask and you've been, you go to the store or something like that, you've been wearing it, it starts to feel like you have a damp rag over your face, which also makes it harder to breathe. Um, and if you have glasses, it's more likely to fog up your glasses, but these don't hold moisture. And I've been wearing them throughout, you know, these past two years and I found, found them very handy. And, uh, more importantly, I haven't gotten COVID. So, um, they're good for flu. They're good for particulates, anything like that. So I'll put the link here as well. Um, okay. So as I said, women are statistically higher, have a higher occurrence of developing COPD, even if they haven't smoked. 15% of people who have COPD have never smoked. And of those 15%, 80% are women. Um, but the good news is that women have to see, seem to have a more immediate effect because of those smaller lungs to smoking cessation. So um, if you quit, you have even you know quicker um, improvements um, than your male counterparts do. Um, and also keep in mind that as far as COPD goes and any kind of chronic lung conditions, women are also more likely to be misdiagnosed. Um, I feel like attitudes are changing now, but it used to be that doctors thought if you don't smoke, you don't have COPD. But as I said, 15% of people who have COPD have never smoked. And of those 15%, most of them are women. So, um, you know, if you've ever lived with a smoker, even, you know, if, if as kids, if your mom and dad smoked in the house, smoked in the car, um, even if you've never smoked, it could have damaged your lungs back then. Um, if you live in an area where there's a lot of industrial chemicals or you, you know, you're a painter, you have a hobby that is, um, you know, painting something to do with fumes or you have to clean your brushes with those fumes. Um, if you spent your whole life cleaning with more toxic chemicals, um, bleach and things like that. Um, there was a study several years ago that, um, a lot of women who got COPD, uh, women nurses got COPD who have never smoked and they found it's because of the sanitation and cleaning chemicals that nurses often have to use in a clinical setting um, that damage their lungs. So again, we've done another, we did a whole other show, which I feel like we should, we're going to probably do again, um, a similar show uh, about spring cleaning using um, safe things, not chemicals um, that they're going to get your house just as clean and just um, as sanitized. Um, but Beware of those kinds of things when you're cleaning. Also, um, I heard, I think it was Barbara Streisand actually was talking about, she's a big advocate for um, heart disease. Um, her sister has heart disease or had heart disease, I think might have passed away. And um, she said that women are also more likely to uh, be, mis be, be misdiagnosed of heart disease. And for the same reason, maybe they're not obese, maybe they don't smoke, but they also are more susceptible just chemically and physiologically to heart disease. But they go to the doctor and the doctor, you know, thinks, okay, well, they don't have any risk factors. They probably just maybe have some anxiety or maybe have, you know, whatever. Um, so they don't put them on some of the, you know, regimens that they need to get on. So um, if you go to the doctor and, you know, the doctor says, you know, I think you have this and you say, you know, but we've tried that and it hasn't worked. Um, don't be, you know, polite. I think it's, you know, I think it's natural for everybody like, well, he's the doctor, he's the expert, uh, but you know, your body. So when you go in there, you really need to advocate for yourself, get a second opinion, talk to another doctor if you have to. Um, you know, it's not so much that you need to worry about if something, the doctor's going to take something personally, this is about your health and it's going to be, um, you know, you're going to have lasting effects if these things don't get taken care of in a timely manner. So, 
Um, you know, keep in mind that women are most are more likely to be misdiagnosed for chronic lung conditions than men. And so if you go in and you know that, you know, you don't just have asthma or you don't just have allergies and you've tried those medications and they're not working, um, push for some more tests to be done. Um, we have a uh, client who uh, has been our client for a while. Um, she has COPD and she went misdiagnosed and undiagnosed for 20 years because she was not a smoker. She was, um, she went to the doctor. She went to several different doctors. She had done her own research and she's saying, you know, I think I have COPD. And the doctor said, okay, you're a smoker. No, I'm not a smoker. Okay. Well then you don't have COPD. You have allergies. You're a little bit overweight. You need to lose weight. That's why you're having trouble breathing. All this time went on. Finally, after 20 years, um, you know, they tested her, they gave her some pulmonary fit tests and things like that and found that she does in fact have COPD. And it was because in her twenties, she had Legionnaire's disease, uh, which is a bacterial disease. And um, she healed from that fine and that was okay. But um, you know, when she was in her twenties, her lungs got scarred. And as her lungs, you know, aged progressively, when she got into her late fifties, early sixties, um, they started giving her problems. The scarring, you know, was getting progressively worse all that time. And she didn't ha in fact have COPD, but she missed out on 20 years of, you know, slowing disease progression and treatments that she could have been having. Um, so don't be afraid to advocate for yourself. Don't be afraid to get a second opinion and, um, you know, don't die of politeness for sure. Um, ask for a spirometry test. Um, it's also been found that medication side effects may be more severe in women it has to do also with lower body weight, but also, you know, we've talked a lot on the show about bone health and the effect of corticosteroids. Women are more likely to lose bone density as they enter menopause and are postmenopausal. Um, and so those corticosteroids are more likely to affect women, um, and their bone density. Um, so corticosteroids are essential for inflammation reduction. Um, so inflammation related diseases, a lot of people use corticosteroids for those. Um, they aid in swell, reducing the swelling in airways and all, you know, other muscle groups. Um, but long-term steroid use such as prednisone have been proven to be an underlying cause of osteoporosis. Um, a study by the New York State of Osteoporosis Prevention and Education Program stated that one in three postmenopausal women who use steroids will more likely are more are likely to experience a bone fracture one in three so using steroids makes you twice as likely to have a spine fracture uh, prednisone ingesting prednisone daily for three months increases the risk of hip fracture by seven times the same dose increases the risk of lumbar fracture by 17 times and just keep in mind that loss of mobility, a lot of people who have complained about, um, you know, lower quality of life when they have a lung disease, some of it is because of breathing. They have a hard time breathing or they're afraid to go out or they just get tired easy. But a majority of it is has to do with loss of mobility. And part of it, it could be because they lost mobility because they broke a hip. Now they have chronic pain um, and um, you're more likely to you know, need permanent help because of that, or, you know, have and purport uh, loss of quality of life. So um, we've, t you know, we've done several shows on bone health. And so you can go back and watch those. I'm going to go over just a few things right now. Um, but, you know, be sure, especially if you're on corticosteroids to be taking steps or speak to your doctor about what they want you to do. As far as adding things into your diet, they're going to be healthy for your bones. Um, keeping your core strength up so you're not relying so heavily on your skeleton, but your core strength, your stomach, your muscles, your posture and all those things. Posture is so important for breathing as well. If you're sitting like this all the time, pushing in on that lung cavity and it's just going to make it hard to breathe. Is As you're walking or sitting, if your posture is up nice and straight, you're, you're breathing and you're eating and all those things are going to be so much easier. Um, so another study by chest chest is the American college of chest physicians showed that an increased risk of fracture for corticosteroid users, women over 40 are more susceptible to osteoporosis. As we said, as we said, and cost corticosteroids impedes the way your body absorbs and metabolizes vitamin D and calcium. That's why it's so hard on your bones. Um, so calcium is used in many ways in the body. Um, it allows your blood to clot. It helps with essential muscle function. 
and is essential for the beating of our heart. And also, as you know, essential for our hair, nails, skin cells, bones, teeth, everything like that. So 99% of calcium is in our teeth and bones. So if your body needs calcium to perform one of those other functions uh, and you're not taking in enough um, calcium nutritionally, it's likely to get it from one of those sources. So it's going to start mining some of that calcium from your bones, from your teeth, and um, you're going to have some weakness from that. Um, so if you have been on corticosteroids, you are on corticosteroids for a while, and especially if you are in menopause or postmenopausal, uh, it's a good idea, idea to ask for a bone density test from your doctor, just so you know what you're dealing with, if you need to get on supplements or if other measures need to be taken. Um, you know, it's a good idea to ask for a bone density test. Um, magnesium and vitamin D are also related to calcium levels. So vitamin D helps your body more efficiently absorb and use calcium and magnesium keeps calcium out of your soft tissues where it is detrimental. Um, so it's available in supplemental form. All those things are available in supplemental form. But as we've said many times on this show, um, you know, if you're, if you eat something that doesn't agree with you and you have to get into supplemental form, it's fine. It's still beneficial, but your body has an easier time and a better time. And it, it benefits more from getting nutrition from food just because that's where your body is designed. So, um, you know, try to get it from nutrition if you can. And also to keep in mind that sometimes supplements, depending on what else is in them or, um, you know, how much you're taking, it can also negatively affect, um, or have, um, interaction with your medications. So it's something you want to check with your doctor doctor about. Um, you know, we did, we have a whole, we did a blog post a few weeks ago about um, medication interactions. It was actually a series of two blog posts because it was a lot of material to cover. I'll put the links here, but in there, it also, um, it lets you know about some apps that you can download from your phone that are easy. So you can keep your medications, um, in there so that if you add another medication that app will automatically tell you hey you can't take that with this um if you have a doctor who you know prescribe one thing and you go to a different doctor who's going to prescribe another thing don't assume that those doctors are talking to each other about your medications don't assume that your doctor knows that you're already on this other thing unless you tell them so if somebody if the doctor is going to prescribe you something just say okay that's okay but i'm on also on this is that going to be all right um, and if you have any questions, ask your doctor when you go to the pharmacy, um, nowadays, I know it's hard sometimes because you don't always talk to the pharmacist. You sometimes just talk to the cashier or get to your package. But if you have questions, um, you know, ask to talk to the pharmacist and they'll come up and give you directions. Let them know of any other medications you're on, anything you need to be aware of that interacts negatively with the med new medication that you're going to go on or something like that. Um, so in order to get, um, you know, other, to get, you know, better bone density and things like that, um, we found some dietary things here. Like I said, we did a whole show about this, but I'm just going to go over these very quickly. So you just sort of have them all in one place. Um, so dairy is one of the things that is good for calcium. Um, some people have a sensitivity to dairy and it negatively affects their mucus production, making it thicker or, you know, increasing it. So if you've had that sensitivity, there's some other foods here that you can use, but if you don't have that sensitivity, dairy is a great place to get some calcium, vitamin D, things like that. Um, calcium rich foods other than dairy include spinach, kale, any of those dark green vegetables, soybeans, um, fatty fish, especially salmon and sardines. And you'll notice that some cereals say fortified with vitamin D and calcium. Um, you'll see some orange juice that say fortified with vitamin D or fortified with calcium. Um, you might try those. Foods that are rich in vitamin D are fatty fish, cheese, egg yolks, liver, orange juice, and um, the free supplement, sunshine. Um, foods that are rich in magnesium are nuts, avocados, dark chocolate, lentils, beans, peas, tofu, whole grains, bananas, and leafy greens. Um, all those things are good for magnesium. Um, another thing besides bone health that women often struggle with more so than their male counterparts in the same progression of the disease, um, is being underweight. Um, and it's for several reasons. Uh, one thing is women uh, seem to be more susceptible to depression and anxiety if, as a result of their chronic disease. Um, they don't want to complain. They just want to sort of get on with life. But sometimes they don't also allow people to help them and allow people to be that shoulder to lean on or that ear, that listening ear. So um, if you are suffering for depression and anxiety, uh, learn some techniques to decrease your anxiety. 
We've talked on the show a lot about medication, about breathing exercises. We have a guided meditation on our YouTube channel. Um, you know, do Tai Chi, do some walking, physical activity, um, boost those hormones that, um, you know, that are good for basically, you know, mood, mood chemicals. So, um, do some of those things, um, and talk to somebody if you have to, if it's your, um, doctor, if it's your, um, if it's your pastor, if it's, um, you know, anybody like that. But um, it's important that you, um, you know, maintain a healthy body weight. Um, one of the reasons why, so it can be from depression. It also could be because that your medication is decreasing your um, appetite, um, you know, or you don't feel like eating because you get bloated. So you're not getting enough, um, you're not getting enough calories. But keep in mind that somebody with normal lung function um, uses about 50 calories per day just to breathe. Um, but a study by the Cleveland Clinic found that somebody with an advanced lung condition can use up to 750 calories per day just in the act of breathing. That's 15 times more than somebody with normal, um, regular lung function. So, um, you know, just you have to sort of pack on those calories. You're going to have to eat 15 times more calories to maintain the same weight as somebody would. Um, so keep in mind that even if you aren't in that advanced stage, you're probably using more calories in the act of breathing per day than the average person. So you're more likely to struggle with, um, you know, keeping your weight, um, keeping, keeping, uh, your proper body weight. So, um, it can also lead to more fatigue being underweight and not getting enough nutrition because you're not eating as much and just being, um, you know, less active is going to lead to that depression, anxiety that we talked about as a downward spiral or you quit eating more. Um, so, um, but not getting adequate nutrition is really going to affect your immune system. If you affect your immune system, you have a lower a compromised immune system and you get a cold, um, or you get and you know, nasty flu or something like that, that moves into your lungs, that's going to, that could lead to, uh, you know, move to pneumonia or lead to a more, um, you know, severe condition that's going to land you in the hospital. And if you get in there and you have pneumonia or something like that, that moves into your lungs or a severe respiratory, um, infection that scars your lungs further, um, you know, even when you get rid of that uh, condition, whatever it is, whether it's bacterial or viral, uh, that scarring stays. Um, that doesn't, you know, that's not repairable at this point. So you want to uh, make sure that you're keeping your immune system healthy and, um, you know, make sure that you're keeping your body weight at what it should be. Um, another thing is we talked about loss of mobility when it comes to loss of quality of life, when it comes to your bone health. But what, if your body is not getting enough nutrition and it's run out and you're so thin that it's you run out of fat to eat, it's going to start eating your muscles for energy or you know, to perform any functions. And that's what's known as muscle wasting. And that's going to cause even more loss of mobility. And it's also going to cause, um, you know, more breathing problems. Breathing is a muscular function, your intercostal muscles, your diaphragm, those are muscular. So, um, you know, if you are underweight and your body starts wasting away those muscles in order to, you know, get some energy, um, it's going to, compound the problems that you're already having. So you want to make sure that you are, um, you know, staying, uh, at a healthy body weight. So know your food triggers. We talk all this time, uh, on the show about food diaries, knowing what foods bother you and knowing what foods are going to affect your breathing are essential. So, um, you know, and also going out and getting food can be exhausting or food prep can be exhausting. So, try to prep food, you know, try to pick a couple days during the week. If you're, you know, have more energy in the morning, try to pick some mornings where you feel like, okay, I'm going to prep some food and prep a few different meals that are going to, that can be in the refrigerator or be in the freezer that you can heat up easily so that you don't have to, you know, as the day goes on and you're, you know, dinner, it's time for dinner and you're already kind of tired. You don't have to stand there and try to chop things and stand up and prep a meal. Um, you can just heat something up quickly um, first of all, it's going to make sure that you are getting some healthy food, that you're going to get the calories that you need. You're not going to be tempted to go eat fast food or something salty or something that is just quick and easy because you're just too tired to do anything else. But try to prep those meals if you can. Uh, learn your triggers at, as mealtime comes. Make sure you're not eating too quickly. That causes bloating, also causes indigestion. Eat smaller portions. 
Um, and so that your diaphragm isn't pushing up against your lungs, making it hard to breathe and you're not, you know, feeling bloated. Um, make sure that you drink plenty between meals, but while you're eating, try to avoid drinking as much as you can. You don't want to just fill up on liquid. Um, you know, you got to stay hydrated throughout the day because I, you know, proper hydration is important for many things, but also for digesting food, your body needs that water. Um, so, you know, make sure you're drinking throughout the day, but while you're eating your meal, try to drink, you know, as little as possible. Um, be sure to reduce salt, um, because that's going to cause you to retain water and also eat healthy fats. Uh, because of the way fats are digested, they cause more, they cause fewer breathing problems than some other food. We talk all the time about the respiratory quotient. Uh, the respiratory quotient is basically how much um, oxygen a food uses and how much CO2 it creates, as opposed to how much energy it gives you. Energy is uh, measured in calories. So carbs create the most CO2. Um, you know, they do give you calories. They do give you a quick boost of energy, but they also create the most CO2. So, it, but fats create the least CO2 and fats, you know, give you energy, but they are like slow burning energy. So it's more likely to carry you throughout your day versus having that quick carb high and then kind of a crash. If you, um, you know, eat healthy fats are more likely to sustain you with energy throughout the day and also creates um, less CO2. So healthy fats are things we've already talked about, avocados, fatty fish, uh, nuts and nut butters, um, you know, peanut butters. They add calories and they also have antioxidants, which fight inflammation. And, um, you know, there's something that you can eat just a handful now and again. Um, you can also, you know, crush them up and put them on a salad, put them on your soup just to add a little bit of texture. And they're pretty good. Beans, whole grains, also um, good for that. Um, you can also cook with healthy fat oils, which are like avocado oil, olive oil, coconut oil. Uh, they're calorie dense to use them for cooking. You can add them for sauces. You can add them for salads. Um, and they're more of a healthy fat. Um, too much starch isn't, starch isn't good because they do have carbs. But you might try, if you're trying to put on weight, you might try to add a few starchy carbs, such as sweet potatoes, which are very healthy for you. Um, they've got a lot of vitamin C. They have a lot of things that are good for your immune system. They also have a lot of fiber. Um, corn, rice, and quinoa, other good healthy starchy carbs. Um, dried fruit. Um, dried fruit has a lot of calories. Make sure that you check the sugar content, though, that doesn't have too much sugar. Um, but dried fruit has a lot of calories and also a lot of antioxidants. Just make sure you don't, you know, like I said, get too much sugar. Um, yogurt and protein smoothies are two other ideas you can um, have. Yogurt is good for you. It's good for your calcium, vitamin D. Greek yogurt is especially good for you uh, if you don't have a sensitivity to dairy, um, but it can help you put on some weight. Um, milkshakes and smoothies. If you don't feel like eating, you don't have much of an appetite. Um, maybe your stomach's not feeling so good from lunch. Maybe have a smoothie. Um, yogurt can also, first of all, helps you with digestion. Um, it can help quiet heartburn too, but it also um, adds some calories. So even if you don't want to feel like eating a big meal, you're at least if you have a milkshake, um, a protein shake, or um, you know a yogurt snack, you're gonna at least get some calories that you need to make sure that your body weight is staying healthy. Uh, eggs and lean meats are full of protein. They're easy to cook. Um, the big benefits for those I find that cooking takes too much energy. Um, you can maybe marinate a piece of lean meat in a vinaigrette and then stir fry it with a light oil, like, you know, like I said, avocado oil or olive oil, something like that. A lot of protein, um, you know, the lung association recommends that you have at least two servings of lean protein per day. It's good for your muscles. So try that. It's also a good um, source of calories. And dairy, as we talked about, is also um, not only good for your bones, but it's a good source of calories as well if you don't have that sensitivity. Um, so go to our private Facebook group if you're not already a member. I'll put the link here. You can join. There's 5,000 people such as yourself who are, um, you know, fighting this battle every day, living with a chronic lung disease. Um, you can get in there and ask questions. You can share your knowledge that you've had, something that you found that really works well for you. And most of all, people in there are just joking around and lending each other some support. Um, but if you go to the Facebook group, if you go to the top of Facebook and click on more, you'll see um, the drop down menu files. Look in files and you'll see 
a few different um, recipes in there. There's one that's really good. Um, we did a show for a while. This is before COVID started called O2 Kitchen, which I hopefully we're going to get back to now that, you know, things are getting back to normal. Um, Chef Angie, um, those are on our YouTube channel. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel, you know, so you'll be notified when you get new content on there. But if you look on O2 Kitchen, there's some really good recipes, healthy recipes with lung patients in mind. One of the best recipes, that I, one of my favorites that she's ever cooked was a really healthy and really yummy um, yogurt dessert. It had yogurt with honey and with cardamom. And I think it had all, it had um, walnuts in there. And it was just really good, easy to make. It was, you know, good for your, your gut biome and um, just good for you in general. But that recipe is in there. There's ton, There's a um, healthy, you know, fatigue recipe in there and, you know, things like that. So you find a lot of good recipes in there. The recipes are both in our on our YouTube channel. You can watch Chef Angie make it. Or if you just want to look at the recipe and uh, read about what's in there, you can go to the file section and the recipes are in there. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you have questions, I don't see I have any right here. Um, Michelle said she got an air fryer. I got an air fryer too, Michelle. I've only cooked with it one time. I got it at Christmas. So I'm, I need your helpful hints. Um, it was pretty, pretty good and pretty quick. Um, anyway, uh, I promised that I was going to do an air fryer show once I get better at it. So I need to work at that for sure. But anyway, if you have questions, uh, put them here throughout the week. I'll try to go through and answer questions as I can. And I'll put the link to the studies. I'll put the link to Thrive. I'll put the link to our YouTube channel and all the other things I talked about. So you guys take care. Be well. Um, you know, we're getting ready to spring forward, I think, next week. So get ready for that. And I will talk to you soon. Take care.